very good day to you and welcome to the Real Estate Program proudly brought to you by Rawson Properties Zimbabwe. The Real Estate Show is a program where we talk all things property in this great big stone which we call Omad Zimbabwe. We've talked about property law, we've talked about the different challenges that people face as they're purchasing property. We've even talked about how to get a mortgage from banks. But today we want to talk to buyers and possibly the sellers. Today we want to focus in about estimating the value of a property, estimating value in real estate. And it's necessary for a variety of reasons such as financing, sales, listing, investment, analysis and property insurance. But of course, as usual, I'm not the expert here. Joining me for this conversation, I have with me Zelda Nyamuba, who's the sales partner at Rawson Properties, who will be taking us through how you actually measure the value of property. Zelda, how are you today? I'm well, thanks, Unique. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. So, Zelda, we're talking about estimating the value of property mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot of sellers are tuning in in terms of what what sort of steps they need to use obviously mm -hmm. to make sure that they get the right value okay. so first of all how do you measure value of a property okay there are very different methods mm -hmm. in measuring property values including the technical ones, the cost methods, yeah. uh, your profit methods. But most importantly, the first one that we use usually is a comparison method. Mm -hmm. We do what we call a comparative market analysis, mm -hmm. whereby you measure um, the value of the property based on the recently sold properties on the market. Right. So um, ideally, that's what you start with. You measure it against what has been sold recently on the market. Mm -hmm. And then you now look at... Um, issues to deal with what are the current listings on the market in your neighborhood. Right. Yes. So that will fit into um, basically those uh, high valued properties that mm. have taken so long on the market to be sold. And ideally now you, you, you remove, subtract um, based on the exact features that your property has mm -hmm. until you arrive at uh, the correct value. So basically this is done um, by basic real estate agents. It's not something that can be done by um, the expect value was, mm -hmm. but the basic real estate agents, our sales partners at Rawson, can um, assist on that. Yeah. yeah. But before we get further into the conversation, Zelda, mm -hmm. what is, um, how do we define a market value or property value? Okay. So those are two different terms. Oh, right. When we are saying a market value, it's um, that value that the market is prepared to um, put on your or purchase your property for. Right. But when you're saying a property price, mm -hmm. um, we're talking of its cost, rather, its, its value based on the building, the, 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 the costs that were involved in, in, in coming up with the property. Mm -hmm. So those are different terms um, with the market value. Right. On the market value, we're putting the property on the market mm -hmm. and we're saying, what are buyers prepared to pay for this property? Mm, yes, That's interesting. Yes. And then let's uh, look um, on the other side when we're looking at decreasing the property's value. What can determine the decrease in the value of a property? Okay. This is a very interesting um, point. So you could um, talk of uh, basic um, economic factors mm -hmm. and um, the n surrounding neighborhoods can affect the values of properties. I'll give you a, a critical example. Mm. We talk of areas like Hatfield, yeah. um, waterfalls. They've been affected by the um, suburbs that are next to them, like the airports, the Mbare, because of... Um, you know, situations that are linked with those sub suburbs, like theft, mm. you know, which uh, is making the market not um, put a certain value on those properties. But the, they're generally good neighborhoods. They're you know. generally, yes, yes. But generally, they're, it's they're their neighboring very, neighborhoods. They're, they're, very are, good, okay. they're very good locations, right. good sizes. Mm -hmm. But because of the surrounding factors mm. now, um, it reduces the property value. I see. Yes. And then now we feed into uh, factors to do with the tenants and um, the owners of the property not really uh, managing their properties well. Right. 
So neglect, uh, neglecting those properties leads into decrease of property values because the landlord will not be doing um, the necessary renovations, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. etc., and that decreases uh, the property value in the long run. All right. Yes. Uh, looking at the flip side of the coin, um, increasing property value obviously um, is everyone's wish and dream when they're selling their property. Mm -hmm. But w what sort of steps or what key steps or what key factors will determine an increase in property value? Okay, I'd like to answer this with um, with the main issue that affects a value of a property. Yeah, would start to I always advise my clients to look into issues to do with the location. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. a location of a property will always have an impact on the value of that property. Right. So if you are buying property to sell in the long run, you should look at those uh, factors that okay, where my property is located in the long run, is it likely to increase its value or it's going to be stagnant for a particularly long time? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's an issue to do with location and you cannot run away from that. Mm -hmm. And then aside from that, now you look at issues that um, you can work on, like um, when you're putting your property for sale on the market, invest in a coat of paint, mm. just the general. And then um, you can talk of working on your kitchen, Right. You know, modernizing it so that at least it's it, it's 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 um, what do you call it? It's it's up to date with the current, you know, um, modern features that are there on the market that again will make the buyers or whatever tenants that are coming in uh, put a specific value on the property. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So before we go on a break, let's talk about how you know, a, a person who's selling property can set the right property asking price. Okay. Um, on that, um, let's say outside including mm -hmm. a real estate agent mm -hmm. on, 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 on um, valuing the property, they can look at factors like um, uh, the one that I mentioned earlier. Yeah. On what in the neighborhood, in their neighborhood, what exactly was um, probably a, a near property sold for. Mm -hmm. um, they look at the, the recent sales on the market. Yeah. And then secondly, they can also look at um, issues to do with the current listings on the market. Mm -hmm. They compare that now with whatever was uh, sold in the area. And then after that, now maybe they can, um, there are various platforms, to, just to say, there are various platforms where they can look at these listings. There's property.co.zw. Uh, we also have our website, uh, roson.co.zw, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to check on the prices on the market so that they're guided. And when they approach now real estate agents, mm -hmm. they have a guidance on, on what exactly their property is worth. Uh, because you find some instances whereby you communicate with a client and you tell them a property value, but pro for example, they had a property in the west and they were expecting a value of a property in the north. Yeah. So at least if they go on the market, just have a look, it will guide them on how best they can uh, value their property. That's fantastic. Well, that was Zelda just giving us a background on what it takes in order for your uh, property to have the sort of value that it's supposed to have. Well, after the short break, we'll continue this conversation with Amy Shoto, who is also a sales partner at Rawson. As we look at what role do economic conditions like interest rates and inflation play in the real estate market? We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Real Estate Show, proudly brought to you by Rawson Properties in Zimbabwe. Today we're talking about market value. What determines the value of your property? Could it be the surroundings? Could it be uh, the, the, the market price? Uh, could it be what's happening within your neighborhood? Could it even be um, the coat of paint, as Zelda said just before the break? What determines that sort of value? Well, right now I'm 
with um, Amy Shoto, who is a sales partner at Rawson. And we'll be talking a little bit about economic conditions affecting your market value, especially when we're zoning in on inflation. Amy, how are you today? I'm all right, Junik. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So, um, you know, before we obviously lay the foundation on w what it means when we're talking about market value, but let's talk a little bit about how economic conditions can affect um, the real estate market, especially inflation. Okay, Unique. Um, to start off, I would like to um, give a layman's term of what inflation is yeah. um, for them for them to better understand it mm -hmm. in, with regards to the real estate yeah. um, you know, industry. Mm -hmm. um, inflation is basically saying you've got a dollar bill. Mm -hmm. I've got my dollar bill today mm -hmm. and I'm using this dollar bill to purchase something. I'm the consumer. Right. So, for instance, today, I managed to purchase a property, your preferred neighborhood, your dream house. Where's that going to mm, be? <laughs> Mount Pleasant, Marlborough. Okay. Borrowdale. You managed to purchase a property in Mount Pleasant, yeah. in Borrowdale, in Marlborough today yeah. for a dollar. Mm -hmm. And this is 20, let's say 2023. Yeah. And then inflation waits for no one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when inflation comes tomorrow, 2024, mm. what's your price going to be at? Mm -hmm. The house you purchased for a dollar might be at two dollars mm -hmm. next year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but where do we rush mm -hmm. when we think about that mm -hmm. we think oh my gosh it's affecting us it's very good for real estate mm -hmm. especially a person who's investing in real estate right take well i'm going to preempt because i'm now taking um, when we discuss cycles yeah that's when the cycles of real estate come in mm -hmm. because you're going to take advantage of that recovery stage mm -hmm. when properties are at that stage and you've bought it for a dollar remember mm -hmm. next year we're going to be at the peak when properties are high. Yeah. And what are you going to sell it for, Unique? Five dollars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For an investor, that's perfect. Right. So as people tend to get scared and say, oh, inflation is mm -hmm. going to affect this. No. When you see that your, the economy is going through ups and downs, run to real estate. It's mm. the perfect place to invest. Interesting. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. When you actually see the economy going up and down. You should go to real estate. Yes. That's interesting. But maybe let's talk a little bit about, you know, the market cycles mm -hmm. um, that you were talking about yes. and how they affect property values over time. Okay. Um, what, what are your thoughts around this? Okay. Um, when we talk about real estate, we've got four stages. Right. We've got the recovery. Mm -hmm. We've got the expansion. Mm -hmm. We've got hyper supply. Mm -hmm. And then we're back to recession. Right. So it's basically, you know, it's a loop. Right. The recovery stage links with the recession stage right and it's linked with the question that i've answered before mm -hmm. um when it's the recovery stage and the recession stage it's the perfect time to buy right the perfect time to invest in real estate mm -hmm. because when it's recovery the real estate industry is slow mm -hmm. it's very slow and then that's when you if, if it's an economy that offers interest rates in terms yeah. of mortgages our percentages are very low mm -hmm. you take advantage of that right and then there may be shift factors they can allow for the for the cycle to move to the expansion stage. Mm -hmm. The expansion stage is still good. Mm -hmm. Invest there. But when it gets to hyper supply, I would advise no one to invest there. Right. Because that's the time when the prices are at their peak. Okay. So you find people scaring or being scared and they rush mm -hmm. and they buy a property, as we've mentioned before. Yeah. The property that you could have bought at a dollar, you're buying it at five dollars. And you're thinking the, the the market is gonna stay there. No, the market is gonna go back to recession. So you bought it for five dollars. And in a year, it's back to a dollar. Mm. So those are the cycles that come with real estate. Right. We've got factors that can affect the cycles of real estate also. Things like when it's an election season. Mm. I won't talk about Zimbabwe's election because we've passed through it. Let's yeah. talk about America. Yeah. It's estimated that properties are going to sell like hot cakes mm. between now and September. Why? Because people don't really know. Okay, if I keep... Are the interest rates going to be stable? Are they going to remain that way? Mm -hmm. So people start to rush and they're selling. But there's another estimate that after that, the property um, market is going to go slow. Right. So at the end of the day, the cycles, there's certain things that contribute to the cycles of the econ of, of, of real estate. For instance, the pol for instance, the politics of the country. Yeah. Um, personal stuff like, mm -hmm. you know, are you are you taking your child to school? We've got exorbitant school fees especially those who have ch um, kids who are overseas yeah they pay a lot is that is it the cycle of school fees is that a, is what's happening are, are buyers uh, are sellers selling at that time you know the cycle is very interesting it's a very interesting thing but then at the end of the day it's all linked i'll go back to the to what i've said ne never shy away from inflation mm. once the economy is shaky 
the best time to invest in or the property. best thing is to invest in is property. That's interesting. We're definitely learning a lot about market value and when it is that you need to purchase or uh, buy property. Lastly, uh, Amy, let's talk a little bit about um, some of the emerging trends mm -hmm. or factors that may influence our property values mm -hmm. in the future. Okay. Um, currently, the trends that we have, I'll speak for Zimbabwe, we've got the cluster, the gated communities. Mm. Why are people um, mo are moving more towards that? Yeah. It's got issues to do with security. You know, maybe um, well, the, 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 I've, I've got clients, for instance, that would say, I'm not at home most of the time. Um, I want a secure place. Um, so the cluster community is definitely on top of the trends that we're currently mm -hmm. um, in. Those are high-valued properties. If you're looking to invest, I would advise investing those. Um, if you're um, a developer, those are gain. Um, areas you should you, you can actually consider that's for me is the top of the trends that we have currently that's fantastic well thank you to amy shirto who's a sales partner at rawson for giving us a little bit about some of the emerging trends but also looking at cycles when we are looking at the market value of a specific property and also looking at how economic conditions can affect when you buy and sell a property after the short break in our last segment we'll be getting into the property tip of the day. Stay where you are, stay tuned, and we'll see you in a bit. Hi, my name is Zaldo Nyamuba, a sales partner at Rosen Properties, and today I'm going to take you through how you can do your due diligence for the ideal property that you're about to purchase. So this property can either be under title deeds, developer session, or cancel session. So the, if it is under title deeds, you could either do your due diligence through the deeds office, you approach the deeds office and check if this property is registered under that particular seller that you've engaged with. You check if um, it has the correct description that you've seen, the correct um, squareage that you have seen on the uh, title deeds. And if that is in order, now you can even have that done by your legal practitioners or even your real estate agents. Secondly, um, the property can be under developer session. Now you approach the particular developers that have um, that are managing that specific location and check if uh, the property is uh, registered with them. You check again on the um, seller if the seller who's selling this property is actually the one who's um, registered to sell it and then you check on the specifics like uh, the squareages it etc and then thirdly you could um, check if the property is registered if it's under council session you approach the rele relevant authorities um, and check again um, if it's registered under the particular seller that you want to purchase from so basically these are the three types of um, due diligence that you could do for the ideal property that you want to purchase Thank you. Thank you to everyone who joined us on today's episode of the Real Estate Program, proudly brought to you by Rosen Properties Zimbabwe. Today we're talking about market value, um, defining what market value is and what determines the value of your property. Is it the surroundings of your neighborhood? Could it even be what the outside of your property looks like or the coat of painting? But also economic conditions could affect uh, the market uh, value of your property. Thank you to everyone who joined us and we'll see you next time.